without wavering. And it says that if we do those things and we believe, we hold fast, and we believe and we don't give up and we don't quit, he is faithful to promise. In those instances, I can come boldly. I can come with confidence of the way that he says it here. Having therefore, brother, boldness to enter into the holiness by the blood of Jesus. I can have that if I come that way. You know, uh, a lot of time we'll get convicted of something. Uh, and maybe uh, we'll say a prayer about that thing. But it's a lot like what I was kind of mentioning other times. About we'll hear a sermon and when we hear the sermon, yes, I'm going to do that. I've got to do that. Uh, I'm going to change. I'm going to be what God wants me to be. And by the time we get home or by the time Monday or Tuesday comes, that's nowhere in your mind. And that's a lot of times what we do. Uh, you know, I talked about in Sunday school that Satan knows you your weaknesses. And he's going to keep attacking you in that area. Uh, if you keep falling in that area, he's going to keep attacking in that area. Uh, but if you realize that and you go and you seek forgiveness and you get up from there and then you go out and you don't do anything to change anything and he comes and he attacks again and you fall right back into it, you haven't made the effort to resist. You haven't made the effort uh, to stand against it. You, you forget about it once you say, uh, forgive me, and then you go on your way until it happens again. The Christian life is a continual process of pruning and growing and getting rid of the rotten fruit and all of those kind of things. It's a continual thing uh, that we have to be doing. And... We have to constantly do what this says, cleanse ourselves and wash ourselves. But listen to what the Bible says. If we do that on a continual basis, we can come boldly unto the throne of grace. We can come boldly and seek him and we will obtain and we will receive those things uh, that we seek from him. <coughs> Listen, I, let me back up here. I want to go back, uh, chapter 10, and back up a little bit. Verse 14 of chapter 10. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Is that us, the sanctified? Yes, it is. If we're born again, we are the sanctified. That's who he's talking about. And he says, by one offering he hath perfected uh, forever them that are sanctified. Wherefore, the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us after that he had said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts and in their minds will I write them. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. So, and then he goes into what I read, having therefore, brethren, boldness. If we have those sins forgiven, uh, then we can enter with that boldness. Uh, when we have those sins forgiven, he remembers them no more. Uh, a lot of time uh, we think I'm not worthy and I'm not good enough and I've done this and I've done that. But if we go in true repentance and he uh, forgives those sins, he doesn't remember them anymore. Uh, that's why we can approach with confidence. That's why we can approach with boldness. That's why we can be assured that he hears us and, and that he grants us those things uh, that we seek him for. And again, we have to come in the right manner. I'm trying to make this not all conglomerate. I, I, I worry that I don't get things clear. Uh, but I want you to think back to what I was talking about the high priest. Uh, before he would go into the Holy of Holies, he had to make sure uh, that he was dressed properly. They had a certain thing that they had to wear. He had to make sure that he washed himself before he entered in uh, to the presence of God. Now, we don't physically have to dress a certain way. And we don't physically have to wash ourselves uh, uh, the way that they had to do. But he had to do that before he entered in uh, to the Holy of Holies. Now, that's an example for us. The Bible tells us that that's an example for us. And so what is that to teach us? Uh, that we have to come dressed properly. We can't come uh, with 
spots and, and smudges and stuff on our, our robe of righteousness. We can't come uh, after we've been living all week worldly. We can't come after we've been walking ungodly. All of that has to be taken care of uh, before we enter in uh, to that place. So does that mean, how can I uh, ever, ever enter into God and, and do those kind of things? That washing that he did, uh, that proper attire that he did, was a prerequisite to enter into the Holy of Holies, was a prerequisite to enter into the presence of God. How do we wash ourselves? We go to Christ and we seek forgiveness. We go to Christ and we leave uh, our sins uh, at the foot of the cross, if that's how you want to put it, that cleans up our robe, uh, that white robe of righteousness that it gives us when we're born again, that cleans that up. Uh, we have to get all of that taken care of. Any Christian, anytime, anywhere, anyhow, can go to uh, seek forgiveness. If you come with a broken heart and a contrite spirit and you are truly repentant of your sin, and you can come any time. Uh, what he's saying here is, um, once that is done, we can enter in to a, a place where we can seek uh, much more than just forgiveness. We can seek uh, those things uh, that we desire in our lives. We can seek that power with God. We can seek uh, that restoration of joy. We can seek all that. I mentioned here in prayer request uh, that I believe we need a revival uh, in, our, in our hearts, in our lives. I believe that every individual uh, as Christians, we need a revival in our lives. I don't think anybody would disagree with me. Uh, I, I'm fairly confident that probably you guys have asked God for a revival. If God gives freely to them who ask, if he said we can come boldly and ask and we will receive, how come we haven't received? How come we haven't received? God says he'll give it to us. Talked about this in Sunday school. He said he'll give you the desires of your heart. If the desire of your heart is to be revived, is to be set on fire, is to have a boldness, is to have all of those things that are pleasing to God. If that's the real desire of your heart, and you go and you ask for it, how come you didn't get it? The Bible says we get it, right? How come we didn't get it? Uh, I say this often, you have to take the Bible in its entirety. You said in James, uh, to wash your hands and, and cleanse your hearts. You said it in the scripture that I read here. Uh, to wash your bodies and all of that. We can't come dirty. We can't come smudged. Uh, we can't come holding back and receive those kind of things. Those things have to be taken care of first. Those things have to be gotten out of the way first. We have to cleanse first uh, before we receive them. There's no prerequisite to receiving forgiveness other than realizing that you have sinned uh, and that you need forgiveness and coming and seeking forgiveness. But there is a prerequisite to getting a lot of prayers answered. There is a prerequisite to receiving a lot of things. Uh, I've talked about this many, many times, and you guys know this. I'm not telling you something that you don't know, where God says that if you love me, you will keep my commandments, then you can ask whatsoever you will and shall be done unto you. And there's many scriptures that are similar to that. Uh, that if we walk in the Word, that if we keep His commandments, uh, that if we live the right way, then we can ask and we will receive. Why aren't we receiving? <clears throat> now, I think it's because, and, and you know, if this don't apply to you, um, fine. Uh, but I know it applies to me. Uh, but I think why we aren't receiving a lot of those things we're asking for is because we haven't did what that priest did. We didn't cleanse ourselves. Uh, we didn't prepare ourselves. Our garments were not as they are to be uh, before we went 
and ask for that before we approach and ask for that. If I cleanse myself and prepare myself and I come in in that, that way, then I can come in boldly. Then I can come in with confidence knowing uh, that I will receive. That's the word of God. That's what the Bible said. And, you know, if you do all that, God will hear you. He said he will hear you. And, and there's scripture uh, over in Romans, and you know the scripture in chapter 8 where he says, uh, and the Spirit will even help you. The Holy Spirit will even make intercession for you uh, with groanings which cannot be uttered. Uh, the heart cry. Uh, from you to God. The Holy Spirit will interpret that uh, to God um, and, and carry it for you. When we come in that manner, He will do that. <coughs> <coughs> if we believe uh, that this is the Word of God, and if we believe that it is the truth, and if we believe that God cannot, does not, will not lie, then we have to believe that when He said... Uh, that I can have the desires of my heart. Uh, we ha I have to believe that when he said, ask and you shall receive, knock and it shall be open, seek and you shall find. That has to be true. But my experience is not that. A lot of the time my experience is not that. So there has to be a reason why my experience is not that. Why is my experience not that? Am I truly repentant? Am I truly broken and contrite over my sin? Uh, in Sunday school we talked about this. James said, weep and mourn and wail uh, over your sin. Do we do that? Sin doesn't bother us a whole lot. You know why sin doesn't bother us a whole lot? Because we've been conditioned to do, all I've got to do is go say, forgive me God, and it's all over with, and everything's good, and I can get up and I can go do it again. Uh, because that's why we are not broken over our sin. Our sin doesn't bother us very much. Uh, maybe for a little bit until we do that, forgive me God, and then we get them going, and then we're okay with it again. Um, something has to be hindering us from receiving these things that God promised to us. And what is hindering uh, us is that we're not coming in the right condition. Uh, we're not coming the right way. Uh, we're not living according to His Word. Because doing all that, that's where He says, if you keep my commandments, then you can ask what you will, and it shall be given unto you. Uh, it, all them scriptures that talk like that, we have to be doing that. Listen, uh, over in the book of 1 John, chapter 3, verse 22. Whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. Well, glory, hallelujah, I can ask for a Cadillac. I can ask for anything. I can do it, and it's going to, you have to take the whole thing. He said, whatsoever we ask, receive of him, because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. We receive them because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Mm -hmm. That's when we will get them. That's when we receive them. So what are you saying, preacher? I'm not living right. I'm not doing what God tells me to do. I'm not keeping his commandments. I'm not doing things that are pleasing to him. I'm not telling you that. I'm telling you what the word says. I had asked you before I started. You listen to what the spirit says to you. If I'm not talking to you, fine. Um, but you listen to what the spirit says. Uh, I can only answer for myself. You've got to answer for yourself. And all I can do is propose the question, why aren't your prayers being answered? Why aren't you receiving those things? Why is there no power in your prayer? I can ask the question and I can tell you what the Bible says. You've got to uh, do with it then uh, what God would have you to do with it. Now listen to that again. Uh, 1 John 3, 22. Whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. If you jump over to chapter